Hello dear students welcome back again to Chin Moi's biology channel so today we are here with a brand new episode of excretory system in humans part 2 for 7th icsc biology so in the previous episode we have already discussed about the uh, what is excretory system what are excretory organs we have also to discussed about the accessory excretory organs and the excretory products in humans so let us today get started with a brand new episode of excretory system so what are the learning objectives of today's lesson so at the end of this lesson we will be knowing that what are the structure of the kidneys and what is osmoregulation so first we will go to details about the structure of kidneys and then we will move on to osmoregulation so um, if you want to know more regarding this lesson as well as you want to know regarding any other lessons as per your icsc curriculum you need to subscribe to my channel dear students so uh, what are the upcoming episodes of this lesson excretory system and all other systems will be uploaded uh, as per your icsc curriculum so please subscribe to my channel stay tuned stay updated with all the lessons i am posting so let us start with today's episode of excretory system part 2 now we are here with osmoregulation so what is osmoregulation osmoregulation is a process that regulates the osmotic pressure of the fluids and the electrolytic balance in organisms so what is electrolytic balance that is maintaining the sodium potassium balance in the organisms and it is also helping to regulate the osmotic pressure of the fluids now besides removing the urea and uric acid from the blood the kidneys what they are doing they are also helping in maintaining the water and salt ion concentration in our body so um, whatever the ion, salt ion concentration in our body the sodium potassium level is always maintained uh, in the body with the help of sweat uh, and the kidneys also so during summer what is happening we urinate fewer than in winter because uh the urine past is usually more concentrated in summer because we are sweating profusely the so sodium potassium ions are uh, released from our body through that part that is excretory excretory organs are releasing those sodium potassium from our body so we need to uh, we need to pass a few a few amount of urine in summer than in winter so that if uh, we are passing urine also more and we are sweating also more then what we will have uh, what will happen the electrolytic balance of our body will get hampered so the osmoregulation will not be maintained so here we can say that the kidneys are playing a role in osmoregulation they are regulating the electrolytic balance in our body so that in summer when we are sweating profusely the urine is working less the kidneys are working less sorry so uh, it is passing less urine in summer concentrated urine in summer so that the water balance and body is uh, perfect and in winter when we are not sweating the urine which is passed out is more and is dilute it's not concentration concentrated so the reason behind that in summers we lose much water through sweat so urine should be concentrated to maintain a balance so to maintain the electrolytic balance in the organisms whereas in winter as we are not uh, sweating a lot so the urine past is uh, dilute in nature and it's uh, it's also more than in summer now we will move on to the structure of the kidneys in details now here we are having two diagrams one is we are having the diagram of a longitudinal section of a kidney and other we are having a diagram of a the structure of a nephron so nephron is the structural and functional unit of uh, excretory system or kidney we can say that this we are have uh, taken two diagrams and we will be discussing this in details now each kidney is composed of an outer darker region this darker region is called the cortex region it is the renal cortex and inside we are having a lighter region which is called the inner medulla so this medulla region is lighter and the outer region is the darker one which is the cortex region right so the outer cortex region is always dark and the inner medulla region is always light so inside each kidney there are millions of microscopic filtering tubes which are called the nephrons or the uriniferous tubules so nephrons are also called the uriniferous tubules so they are also called the uriniferous tubules is it clear now we can see in this diagram we can see in this diagram there are renal pyramids as well as that uh, this region is the renal capsule so what is renal capsule so renal capsule it is you can see it is the uh, tough fibrous connective tissue that is closely enclosing the kidney and it is providing support to the softer tissue inside is it clear so it is providing support to the softer tissue inside and it is a tough fibrous connective tissue 
and what is renal uh, what is renal pyramid renal pyramid these we can say that these are renal pyramids these are cone shaped tissues which are helping in blood filtration and water concentration regulation within the kidneys so these are helping in the blood filtration okay these are helping in blood filtration and water concentration regulation in the kidneys they are helping in blood filtration and water concentration regulation in the kidneys so what is the role of we can say that what is uh, what is renal pelvis doing here this is renal pelvis region so this renal pelvis is collecting the urine so its role is in collecting the urine it is uh, uh, acting as a urine collector so collecting the urine is the role of uh, renal pelvis is it clear so renal pedal pel in this renal medulla is the lighter region renal cortex is the darker region renal capsule is the outer tough connective tissue which envelops each kidney and provides support and renal pelvis is the region which is collecting the urine which is produced and we can say that now renal pelvis now what is renal pelvis this is collecting the urine and the ureters are originating from this renal pelvis region only so this ureter is originating from renal pelvis and it is carrying the urine to the urinary bladder where it is stored and from there only it is um, excreted or we can say that urine is passed out now inside the kidney in this region we can see that the main nephrons are there there are millions of nephrons these are called the renal tubules also we have told that these are called the uriniferous tubules right so each nephron it starts from what we should know the structure of the nephron with the with the, we can say that with detail labeling also we should learn this so what is happening here it is the nephrons the nephron is starting from the baumann's capsule so baumann's capsule this you can see that this is a the cup like structure which continues behind as a narrow tubule okay so this tubule is convoluted or this is twisted so this tubule is convoluted or twisted and it's open up in the collecting tubule or in the collecting duct so as all the ducts are collecting the they are opening in the collecting duct all the ducts they open into the renal pelvis which leads to the ureter so the first part is the proximal convoluted tubule then the next part is the loop of henle and the third part we can say is the distal convoluted tubule and the last part they all come and join in the collecting tubule okay so that is first part is the proximal convoluted tubule then it comes to the loop of henle and then it comes to the distal convoluted tubule and last is the collecting tubule and then it moves down to the ureter okay is it clear so this is all now here inside the baumann's capsule this we can see this is the glomerulus so the baumann's capsule and glomerulus they together form the malpighian body okay so this this full part is the malpighian body so baumann's capsule together with the glomerulus they form the baum they form the malpighian tubule is it clear so here the urine formation in this part only the urine formation we will be learning in the next part so here we have divided that into ba this baumann's capsule and glomerulus together they are called the malpighian tubule this is proximal convoluted tubule this is loop of henle or henle's loop then is the distal convoluted tubule and they all are ending in the collecting tubule which is moving to the ureter and then to the urinary bladder is it clear now we will be studying about the urine formation or how urine is formed now here we are uh, starting with the urine formation or the process of urine formation so what is happening what are the main steps of urine formation first comes filtration so the process of blood filtration by the kidneys and the urine formation will be explained in following steps so first step will be when the renal artery it is bringing the blood containing the waste material in the kidneys it is entering the glomerulus so renal artery is bringing the waste blood in the glomerulus and it is under high pressure and glomerulus is always under high pressure and water and small solutes are filtered under this high pressure in this baumann's capsule so filtration is happening here then the filtrate it passes uh, through the when while the filtrate is passing through the walls of baumann's capsule what is happening uh, we can see that the body needs uh, some useful materials also are there in that waste also the body needs to reabsorb like glucose sodium and potassium ions so glucose sodium and potassium ions 
and potassium ions are there in this blood and that is reabsorbed in this Bowman's capsule that are needed in the body and they are put back into the blood again. Now next to which comes the secretion. So the remaining liquid along with the waste of urea, uric acid and so on is called the urine and it is collected in the urinary bladder. But the full detail process you will be studying in higher classes. You just um, uh, for your basic information for 7th standard you know that the blood which is brought about in the to the kidneys to the nephron through the renal artery is being filtrated first in Bowman's capsule. Then it is reabsorbed the sodium potassium ions and glucose it is reabsorbed and then it is moving down to the uh, proximal convoluted tubule loop of Henle and distal convoluted tubule because the remaining liquid along with water urea and uric acid it is called the urine and it is collected in the collecting tubule so last collecting tubule was there as we have seen in the previous um, uh, in the previous picture it is having the collecting tubule from the collecting tubule the urine leaves the kidney and passes to the urinary bladder through the ureters so it is then moving uh, to the collecting tubules so for excretion it is moving to the collecting tubules so when it is in the collecting tubules, it is having urea, uric acid and so on. So all the waste materials are there. So in the collecting tubules, it is having urea, uric acid and other waste products like uh, and other waste products. And then uh, it is it is um, moving to the ureter from the ureter to the urinary bladder and then to the urethra finally to uh, Finally, it is passed out from the body. So these are the basic steps of urine formation and these are the main parts of urine formation that is filtration, reabsorption, secretion and excretion. So after reabsorption is happening for secretion, it is moving down to the, all the three um, uh, tubules like proximal convoluted tubule, distal convoluted tubule and uh, uh, the loop of Henle in between. And then it is passing on to the collecting tubule from the collecting tubules to the ureter. So ureter we know it is a tube like structure which is carrying it to the urinary bladder and from the bladder to the urethra to be excreted from the body. So I think if you have gone through the previous episode of your excretory system you know how the what are the parts of excretory system and how from the kidney the urine is passing to the ureter to the urinary bladder and to the urethra. So the same thing is processing here with the process of basic steps of urinary uh, urine formation I have discussed. So um, please go through the previous uh, uh, part one. If you have not yet gone through that, I'll be putting the link above in the i box as well as in the description box below. Go through it. Uh, don't uh, forget to go to the first episode. Otherwise, this will be harder for you. So uh, please do subscribe to my channel if you want to know regarding the next part of this lesson also what I'll be posting. And uh, I'll be posting the other depth topics also which are as per your ICSC curriculum. So stay tuned, stay updated with all my episodes. Thank you.